Okay, quick game. I want you to name me a self-driving taxi company. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Right, if you're in the US, I'm guessing you just said Waymo or Cruise, as they're the big US names in autonomous ride hailing. But in China, it's a different story. There, companies like AutoX, Pony AI, DD, WeRide, and Baidu's Apollo lead the way, and some have even carried paying passengers, albeit with support drivers. And now, they're headed for the US. Specifically, California, where almost half of the robo-taxi companies that have permission to test without a driver are Chinese. And recently, AutoX announced it was opening a new operations center in San Francisco. The biggest attraction is really US being a huge market. Yep, that's one of China's biggest autonomous driving companies effectively setting up shop where Waymo and Cruise operate. So does this mean you'll soon be able to hail a Chinese robo-taxi on US roads? And will that give Waymo and Cruise a run for their money? Let's find out. Okay, first I want to explore why the market for autonomous vehicles, or AVs, seems to have exploded in China. See, while US autonomous ride-sharing companies had long led the way, recently Chinese companies have accelerated their efforts. The mobility as a service is a much easier case to happen in China. That's AutoX's CEO, Zhen Xiong Xiao, who also goes by the name Professor X. China market obviously is a great market, is the probably the largest in the world. Being here, we have the unique advantage that because the supply chain is here, the uh, ecosystem, the hardware ecosystem here, we can build stuff easier, we can iterate, we can design much faster. What's more, China has also invested in zones where AV companies can test their vehicles. You've got what they call these cooperative vehicle infrastructure systems or CVIS demonstration zones. That's Bill Russo, CEO of Automobility, a consultancy firm based in China, and a man who has ridden a few auto OXs in his time. If you've got a CBIS infrastructure, which includes roadside units, a whole lot of base stations, and a whole lot of connected infrastructure, that's stuff that, that the AV company doesn't have to burden themselves with. It's that environment that has helped these Chinese companies gather troves of data and grow quickly. And now they're expanding in the US. And yes, I did just say expanding because some of these Chinese companies have actually been in the United States for quite some time. You just might not have noticed them. In January 2017, we, we were the, one of the first company from China to actually get the driving testing permit in California. You see, in order to get started in the driverless vehicle business in California, you need a few things. Firstly, there's testing permits from the Californian DMV and the Californian Public Utilities Commission some of which require you to have a support driver, while others don't. Once you've got that, you then need some vehicles on the ground, and a place to capture and process all of the data you're gathering. And all of that takes time. That's why we established an operation center there, we start building a, a local team there. But Chinese companies have been making headway. Last year, their autonomous cars collectively racked up over 450,000 miles on Californian roads, with Pony AI, who have offices in California and China, being responsible for the vast bulk of them. For context, even collectively, that's still way less than Waymo's 2.3 million miles and Cruise's 870,000 miles. And crucially, so far, no Chinese company has secured a deployment permit, which would enable them to carry paying passengers on some Californian roads. But that might not matter. According to Bill, some of these Chinese companies may never actually intend on carrying passengers in the United States. Which begs the question, what are they doing in the US? It's very simple. The most progressive place on the planet for enabling the testing and the measuring of the effectiveness of the technology is California. They all want to prove themselves out on the, at the major league level. And California right now, for lack of an alternative, is the major leagues where you can meet the rest of the world and compare yourselves against the rest of the world. What Bill told me is that he believed even though China may be a bigger market for robo-taxis, Chinese companies may still need to be seen in California in order to be taken seriously by global investors. If you're gonna really raise the, the awareness of your name and get the valuation high, you need to find a way to attract the, U, the, the global capital investors. And you're not gonna do that if you're not in the United States. It's a bit like New York Fashion Week, for lack of a better analogy. Sure, while you're there, you hope you secure orders, but being seen among the industry's elite is arguably just as important. When I spoke to Xiao, I asked him when I might see a driverless AutoX carrying paying passengers on US roads, and he couldn't really tell me. 
yeah, we're definitely working very hard towards that goal. But as we, as we always be, we always put safety as our highest priority. So while you might start to see more and more Chinese and international driverless companies expanding their operations in California, it might be quite some time before you get to ride one of their vehicles across the Golden Gate Bridge. Hey, thanks for watching. So do you think you'll be able to ride a Chinese robo taxi on a US road anytime soon? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you're interested in the future of how we might be getting from A to B, then don't forget to subscribe. See you soon.